Hello and welcome back to Paula Accent Maker, your professional accent coach. Today I've decided to answer the ever-repeating question which is why don't I sound like a native speaker? Why don't you sound like a native speaker of English? What exactly makes you sound foreign? Because apart from the pronunciation and accent, there are also many other aspects of language that people very often don't realise. And today, I will show you all of these aspects of English that make you sound foreign. So today, we won't talk exclusively about the pronunciation and accent, but also about the language in general. Stay with me, please. So you sound foreign because you have bad grammar. What usually happens is that people have a relatively big knowledge of grammar in general. They have a relatively wide knowledge of grammar tenses. The thing is that very often they wrongly pick the tense in a wrong situation. What happens extremely frequently is confusing present continuous with present simple. Very often people say, when I'm going to work, I... or when I'm driving to work, I'm listening to the audiobook. No, you should say, when I go to work, when I drive to work, I listen to audiobooks. You talk about regularity. Why do you use so often present continuous? Another situation, when people tell me what makes it difficult for them to speak English, they say, when I'm speaking with my colleagues, when people are listening to me, instead of when I speak with my colleagues, when people listen to me. This is a very common mistake, confusing, present continuous and present simple. It is taken directly from your mother tongue, in this case from Polish. So remember, instead of saying I'm often hearing, say I often hear. When I'm going to work, when I go to work. Not when I'm talking with my friends, but when I talk with my friends. Present simple, use it more often please. Another aspect of grammar that is highly problematic is the wrong usage of grammar structures, like for example conditionals. Many people say, when I will get home, I will watch TV, instead of when I get home, I will watch TV. When the weather will be nice, we will go, no, when the weather is nice, we will go for a walk. There are also many problems with second and third conditionals, with mixed ones as well. I very often hear, if I would know, I would help you, instead of if I had known, I would have helped you. I know that the third one is relatively difficult, but please invest some time and energy and try to understand the structure, repeat it, learn it, and then use it correctly in practice. Another difficult aspect of grammar is using the wrong verbal form. For example, confusing the bare infinitive or to infinitive with gerund. Very often people say, I can't afford buying it, instead of I can't afford to buy it. Or he denied to steal instead of he denied having stolen this object. And an extremely frequent mistake, which is saying it's worth to visit this country. No, it's worth visiting this country. It's worth going there. Worth plus ing. Worth doing. It's an ultra-popular mistake of many non-native speakers of English from many, many countries. Many people also say, I'm not used to work, instead of I'm not used to working. I'm not used to being here, I'm not used to going there. What also makes you sound foreign is using wrong prepositions and collocations. Very often people translate literally the prepositional phrases from the mother tongue. For example, Polish people say na moją obronę, on my defense, instead of in my defense. Many Polish people say, translating directly from Polish, na poddaszo, on the attic, instead of in the attic. Or they say, on the south of Poland, na południu Polski, instead of in the south of Poland. People confuse using to or not having to. For example, they say, I will apologize you, instead of I will apologize to you. But in Polish you say dzwonić do kogoś, however in English we don't say call to somebody, but call somebody, without to. But in Polish you say wytłumaczyć komuś, however in English we need to say to explain to somebody. I will explain it to you. 
I know that learning these prepositional phrases is really difficult and challenging. However, when you use them incorrectly, you sound very foreign. What I advise is to simply invest your time and learn it by heart. I know it will take a while, but only this way you will be 100% sure which form you should use. Another aspect of the English language that makes you sound foreign is not knowing the exact English fixed phrases and idioms. Very often people translate the idioms literally from the mother tongue. For example, Polish people try to translate the Polish phrase Sormen zapał into something like hey eagerness, which simply doesn't exist in English. We would rather say flash in the pan. And there are many more examples of this kind. People try to translate skakiet na głęboką wodę, which doesn't really exist in English. Or very specific expressions like in Polish porwać jest mytyką na słońce, which we can't literally translate into English. However, some of these idioms and expressions are exactly the same and can be translated literally. For example, stracić głowę is to lose head. Stracić twarz is to lose face. Zabić czas is to kill the time. They are exactly the same and they can be translated literally. However, you should know the difference. You should know which one can be translated and which can't. If you are not sure if the idiom you'd like to translate literally from Polish or any other language into English can be translated, you'd better think again. I would recommend you to simply try to say it differently, maybe in a more descriptive way. Especially that the chances that you will nail it are relatively poor. We have plenty of different expressions and idioms in English that will not even appear in your mother tongue. For example, a very specific English idiom is a dog's breakfast, meaning a mess. Learn English idioms and fixed phrases because this is something that many native speakers use. Using more idioms will give you this native-like touch. However, be sure that you don't translate literally the idioms from your mother tongue as many of them can't be translated directly. If you're in doubt, check it out. Check it twice and make sure if such expression exists. And the last but not least, pronunciation. Many people pronounce particular sounds in a totally wrong way. Very often they create their own phonetic rules. For example, people pronounce delete like delayed, changing long e into something like a. Another frequent mistake is pronouncing you are like are, and that's why many people say sergeant or carve instead of surgeon and curve. Many people also say work instead of work or work in American accent. Sometimes people pronounce words the way they would in the mother tongue. So, for example, they say pre premium, premium, or media instead of premium and media. They may also say total or bonus instead of total and bonus. So they pronounce wrongly diphthongs, vowels and consonants. Another popular mistake is the final devoicing. So people say bit instead of bid, doc instead of dog, bat instead of bad, aggressive instead of aggressive, back instead of bag, and dick instead of dig. Bag and back are two completely different words. When you say I hit it instead of I hid it, there is also a totally different meaning. Such mistakes may provoke plenty of misunderstandings. And these are surely things that make you sound foreign. You know that for Polish people it's especially challenging because it doesn't really matter if you say krew or krew. Everybody will understand you, especially as the 99% of people devoice endings in Polish. However, in English, very often such voice ending determine the meaning of a word, so please pay attention to it if you don't want to sound foreign. Another frequent pronunciation mistake is putting the wrong stress in particular syllables. Many people say development instead of development, stressing the. Very often people say event, because this is the way, for example, they would pronounce it in Polish, but in English we say event and many events. I also very often hear marketing instead of marketing, stressing the very first syllable. Such mistakes show right away that you are a foreigner. 
Unfortunately, the stress in English is relatively irregular, so very often you will need to learn it simply by heart. Another fairly important source of relatively serious pronunciation mistakes is lack of reductions, lack of linking and wrong intonation. So foreigners would pronounce words separately and they would say do you want to eat some cake? instead of saying do you want to eat some cake? or they would say you are from here, aren't you? instead of you are from here, aren't you? which sounds definitely more native-like. Or they would say, I want to try to do it today, instead of, I want to try to do it today. You can clearly say that using linking and reductions can lift your speaking skills to a completely different level. Native speakers of English don't pronounce words separately, pronouncing every single word the way you see it. There are plenty of things we don't pronounce, plenty of syllables we reduce, plenty of words that are pronounced just in 50 or 60%. Learning all of these processes takes time and practice, but it's really worth it. Especially if you want to sound like a native speaker. Today we've talked about why you sound like a foreigner. It's mostly due to the fact that you have an incorrect grammar, you can't use correctly prepositional phrases, you translate the idioms from your mother tongue to English. Your knowledge of English idioms and fixed phrases is very limited and you make the pronunciation mistakes, like pronouncing particular sounds in a wrong way, replacing the English sounds with your mother tongue equivalents, pronouncing the voiced endings in an unvoiced way, lacking proper stress, intonation and reductions, and reading the words separately, one by one, instead of linking them and grouping them into phrases and chunks of phrases. However, the good news is that you can train and learn all of these things. Grammar is relatively easy, in my opinion, is one of the easiest elements to learn, especially if you want to learn on your own. The knowledge of prepositional phrases and idioms demands from you mostly having more practice, so reading, having interactions with native speakers, listening to how they speak. And pronunciation and accent is also something that you can train and I'm doing my best here on this channel to prove you that it's possible. There are many repetitive and relatively logical rules that you can easily implement in your speech. But what you can do in order to sound more native-like is surely watch my films, follow my tutorials and subscribe to my channel. I promise I will do my best in order to make you become a better speaker. If you enjoy this film, please make sure that you've subscribed and you follow me on my other social media platforms. I hope to see you again. Goodbye.